<laughs> yeah, I like it like that. That's that's hot right there, Jeff. <laughs> Welcome to the 30 minute hour live on lockdown. This is the show where you can unplug, unwind, and let your hair down. I'm your host, Eric Twiggs, your procrastination partner. I am not alone, as you can see from the Brady Bunch squares we have in front of you. Joining me, as always, is Ted Fells. He's the business strategist extraordinaire and the super CEO. Greetings. Greetings. All right. See, also, we got DJ Wody in the building. Yeah. There you go. All right. The Double Dutch bus is coming down the street. Thank you, DJ Wody. We also, we've got the evil marketing genius and introvert extraordinaire, Gary Johnson. Hey, what's up? All right. <laughs> All right. We also have our resident fitness and nutrition expert, Tony Bryan. Hey, everyone. All right. Now, when you lock down, you need a fitness and nutrition expert. Otherwise, you'll be sitting on the couch eating potato chips and Lido's pizza. Now, I'm not too sure, but that may not be on the recommended diet. I'll have to get with Tony later to find out to see if, if the chips and the pizza is recommended. I'll have to check with him offline on that. Right. <laughs> but, but we have a special guest. This is the lighter side of the lockdown. We know you've been watching the news and getting barraged with negativity. So we, we want to present to you the humorous and lighter side of this lockdown. So you leave entertained and recharged. So I, I have a special guest and he has a special fraternal affiliation. We'll, we'll talk about he, He's a proud member of Omega Psi Phi fraternity through this chapter called Gamma Epsilon. They call it GE, the power That's company. GD. The light of the third D. So he's an established author He's a serial entrepreneur. He hails from East Orange, New Jersey, and he's dedicated to living his best life, making bold moves, and he's winning all the time. He's the host and producer of the long-running comedy show, Chocolate Thursdays, and F. William Samuels and Friends, every first Thursday of the month. And as a former athlete, he comes to the stage strong, bringing <laughs> 300 pounds of twisted steel and comedic prowess with advice on topics ranging from relationships to church to fitness. Among his many accomplishments, you should know he completed his first marathon on December 11th, 2016. The race started on December 1st. <laughs> that marathon's a tough thing. Yes, but absolutely is. no film credits unless you count YouTube and his mother's Betamax movies. Mm -hmm. F. William Samuel is here to entertain you tonight. He's right. available for, he's available for Kwanzaa parties, bar mitzvahs, spades <laughs> tournaments, car washes, and rodeos. Quinceañeras also. <laughs> there you go. I, don't, I don't think I don't think Twist could pronounce it, but it's Quinceañeras. There you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks for helping me out with that. Please join me in welcoming F. William Samuel. Hey y'all, what's going on? How y'all doing? Glad to be with y'all today. Thank you for the invite. Oh, Twist man. and company. Thank Welcome. you, brother. Yes, sir. Welcome. It's an honor and a privilege to have you on. Now. We want to hear your comedic perspective. I know you've been looking at this lockdown from a different perspective than the rest yeah. of us. L let's hear your perspective on this lockdown situation we're dealing with. Well, you know, it's a, it's a serious situation, man. And, and I don't think anyone has been able to escape it. Uh, you know, I am going out 
doors regularly. And, you know, I, I just, I pay attention to what I see. The other day I saw a homeless dude, man, uh, digging through the garbage, eating chicken, believe it or not. Uh, and after he finished the chicken bone, he put his mask back on. <laughs> and that's when I was like, man, it's really serious out here, man. So, so you know, you got to stay safe and, man, just be on all P's and Q's, brother. Especially the Q's, but, you know. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> he put his mask on. <laughs> right he put his mask his back chicken. on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Everybody knows it's, it's, it's really serious, man. I, I mean... You know, one of the things that also is happening is, you know, folks are getting bored, man. You know, all of this time in the house, um, I, 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 I didn't know what to do the other day. I filled out the census, man. And <laughs> as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I fill them out each day, man, like a calendar almost, because I'm losing track of the days. Right. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen at the end, but I know we're going to get a lot of stuff on our block, man. We might get a new fire department just for my block. <laughs> they're gonna be like, damn, all the applications that came off of that one street. I think they need some more stuff. So I think we're gonna find a way to win, man, and get some silver lining out of this thing. Right. We might get an airport too and a petting zoo. <laughs> so people have time on their hands, so they might as well use it filling out the census, right? It's either that or 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 Netflix, man. And there's some crazy stuff on Netflix, but you you know, I, I have to tell you, man. Um I've been enjoying, well, I'm spending a lot of time watching Family Feud, man. Oh, and, and I got to tell y'all, I'm, I'm upset. I'm pissed mm. because we did a lot of marching in the 60s. We did a lot of lobbying. Uh, we, we've been spending money, growing our economic wealth. And we didn't do all this just to have a black family on Family Feud every day. It's getting out of hand. Because we only like 14% of the population, but every day it's a black family on Family Feud. Oh, yeah. And and they're quite embarrassing. Oh. You know, it's getting to the point where I'm, I'm becoming embarrassed because they just don't know how to act, man. They always dancing, they <laughs> always singing every answer to other. <laughs> no lie, the other day, man, uh, the question was uh, name something that. Uh, a woman would want that Steve Harvey has. And the lady was like, your bank account, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> said it, and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this is getting embarrassing, man. So I, we fought for a long time, man. And I appreciate the representation, man. But I don't think we should have a black family on every day. Not every day. We got to mix it up every now and then. Got to mix it up. Yeah, got to mix it up. Oh, uh -huh. man. <laughs> Larry. Can't have it every day. So, so that kind of that kind of leads to our next topic, where we can't go outside. It's been a minute since we've been outside. So, we, we need to really talk about what I miss about outside. That's that's our next topic. And I'll go ahead and kick this off, and feel free to chime in, and then I'll kick it over to you guys. But here is what I miss about outside. I miss having the opportunity to take my two kids, my nine-year-old and my six-year-old outside to school and dropping them off and, and not seeing them again until later in the day. That, that's, that's what I miss about outside. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Tony? Oh, me? Me? I miss... I miss going to the roti shop. You see, I'm from Trinidad. Uh -huh. so I have to travel way into another county to go pick up some Caribbean food. And of course, some of the places I have to go to is downtown Washington, D.C. So I can't even, it's like a whole barricaded area in Washington, D.C. I can't get through there. Plus, all my roti shops, all my Caribbean shoes, they, all those people are non-essential. So I miss that. Oh man, what I miss yeah, I never, outside. I never thought I would say this, but I do miss like going to the restaurant and sitting down and eating, even yeah. with the family. You know, I hate when the bill comes, but still I miss it going and being able to sit down and eat with them dude. I got two grown men to eat just like I do. And I'm like, man, please don't order that. Please don't order something that costs $29.99. But I actually missed that right now. <laughs> that is funny. Right about now, yeah. I mean, 
I, at this point, they can the, the waiter can mess my order up. I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm just glad to be outside. I, yeah, I'm just glad we're not practicing social distance anymore. So take your time. Take your time. Do man, man, it's tough. It's just tough going to the grocery store now with with social distancing. You know, you're in there and, you know, everybody's kind of looking at you real strange if you just happen to pass them and, you know, you're trying to keep your baskets away from people. And I just miss just being able to just go to a store and just shop, just do regular shopping and not have to be worried about, you know, how close someone is to me in line or in an aisle. I think that's a that's definitely something I miss. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you bring up something interesting, Ted. I, uh, I have to share this. I, I almost got into an altercation in the grocery store the other day. I'm in the grocery store. This guy, he's in the produce section, wearing like a hazmat suit. <laughs> like, like he's taking this thing over the top. Or, like or they shoot the movie. Or they shoot the movie. <laughs> Man, I, I thought maybe they were. I, I was looking around for cameras or what have they you. Probably, they probably owe you forty dollars. You was an extra, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm an extra. I didn't know this guy. I mean, there was no germ that's ever going to get to this guy, right? So I, I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna give a distance. I'm like eight feet away from this guy, and he's just like, give me space, give me space. Like we almost got into this altercation. I mean, it, it just tells you like the, the way the world is going right now. Yeah, because I'm right now. This this here is my uh, grocery list. Uh -huh. So um, you know look, what I do now is um, this is new to me because now I order online, and of course um, I this is new. Um, I order my food um, and uh, and go. I describe what vehicle I have and pull up along front, and um, you know just the food comes there. So all this stuff is um, is new. I I never thought I'd be able to do this. You know, man, so. I don't. I don't know if you could tell by looking at me what I miss, man. But it's the barbershop. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like I'm trying to grow a mask. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and you know, little things that used to bother me, I would deal with them now. Like when you're sitting in the chair and the barber got his penis on your shoulder. <laughs> oh, yo, brother, I, I would. I would take that right now. You know? <laughs> I, I miss it, man. I, I would take that right now. I wouldn't even be offended, man. Because right now I'm like a cross between like I'm doing like Frederick Douglass and Grizzly Adams. Oh my you know? god! So um, I, I miss the barbershop, man. Oh man! And it's, it's like you know what? There's, there's always what? that one guy that nobody goes to. Yeah. <laughs> I would even go to him. Right? You would go to him. Yeah, man. Oh, I'm ready man. for you. He, he'll be shocked, you know, because nobody goes to him. <laughs> his clippers don't even his clippers don't even plug in. He don't even have electricity at his station. <laughs> hey, but hey, you know, but he's hey, but he's he's always the first one to speak when you come into the shop, though. Yeah. Hey, 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 how, how you, you doing, doing, man? How you doing? You, nah, 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 I'm good. I'll go. I'll go wait in this line of fifty over here on the end before I get to you. He don't man. even have power at his station, man. He just he like a plant. <laughs> you, 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 let me tell you one thing I'm re I'm really concerned about, guys, is that you know this whole homeschooling thing. Mm -hmm. Like, like there's some friends that I have that have kids that I know they were terrible students in school. <laughs> so I just know their kids are doomed. Like, like if they were terrible in school, you know, back in the you know the '80s and '90s, I know trying to teach some kids something, those kids are in trouble. Hey, so we need to hurry and get these folks back to school. The principal gonna be like, "Look, I got bad news for you. Your kids got to repeat the sixth grade, but you got to come too." Because <laughs> you've been helping them. So. I was like, Bring, like, who did this? Bring your dad with. You. Yeah, for real, man. I want all accomplices. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so here's the thing on that. Like, everybody, even my, my son is six years old, and and they're doing like virtual meetings. They use a Zoom at six. So like the other day, you know, I work from home. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take a break. You know, I'm gonna I'm I'm play with my son, spend some family time. I'm like, son, you know, let's let's spend some time. Now nah, I'm sorry, dad, I got a Zoom meeting. He's six years old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for me, um, um, I was helping my son this this evening. Right now he's uh, actually, he has a tutor right now for um, uh, algebra. So um, I sat down before and um, I was trying, now, 
my background actually is in physics and math. So I thought that uh, my my period of a high school, I actually graduated from high school 43 years ago. Hmm. You know, so I, I'm an old man. But when I try to ex, you know, show him my new math, the way how I get the answer to what they do today is a whole total thing. And he said, Dad, you don't know what you're talking about. So I, I, I had to sit out math, you know, my math there. So, you know, it's uh, for me, I'm, I'm also learning. Uh, what, what are they teaching in school? You know, it's a whole different platform of math and other ways of teaching. Mm. So we, we have to be on top of it. So I'm learning. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. it's really affecting everybody, Twigs. And, you know, I mentioned the homeless dudes before, but they say one of the largest populations uh, where this thing is spreading is uh, uh, incarceration. Mm. You know, and I even heard a story that R. Kelly was worried about COVID-19 and getting it, you know, and, and I, I, I felt rest assured because I knew he wasn't going to get it because he don't, he, don't, he don't mess with nothing over 16. So I think he just safe from the COVID-19, man. He ain't going to have to worry about that at all. Man. Yeah. Not, not at all. But also on uh, the Washington Post, the front page, uh, you'll notice that, um, you know, it's affecting more black men than, yeah. than anyone else. So it's a good read um, to yeah. see what that is. It's, it's affecting a lot of, uh, of, of black men. Um, uh, so we got to be careful. Yeah, man. Absolutely. So, Gary, we, we haven't asked you what you miss about outside. What do you miss, Gary? Nothing, because um, every time I go outside, it just gives me more, more reason to uh, stay inside. Uh, like the grocery store examples and things oh, like that. Occasionally, I will have to go out because uh, I don't want to wait a month to get you know three items shipped to me uh, from the grocery store. But then when I go out, I'm like, okay, this is why you don't go out. Uh, when you see the craziness and the type of mask people try to put on, um, the gloves and stuff like that. So I'm like, ah. Uh, I don't want to know any of these people. So I don't miss anything. I'm fine here in my fortress. Um, <laughs> security camera, everything I need. Uh, so I'm, I'm good. Masks, you know, so I'm good here. Does paper masks, anybody's making paper masks now? Um, how many masks do we use um, per day? Just, um, well, I guess, anybody? I, uh, I paper, guess plastic, what? what, well, I, what, have, what? I have a professional ones. I have, you uh, have a professional KN95. one. See that? Yeah. Well, the biggest, we, uh, thing, the biggest thing with the mask, though, is that you know, you hear one day that you're you're not supposed you don't have you don't need the mask, and then they're like, oh, you know what? You need the mask, right? Yeah. Like they need to make up their mind: do we need the mask? Do we not need the mask? Because now you can't even order a mask. And the frustrating no. thing is, some of, some of these things we probably could have purchased a couple months ago, and, and now you know a mask is three hundred dollars. Yeah, but and you'll get it in June. I mean, if you I need a mask, you I got the I got the plug on the mask. Yeah. Hey, yo, I want to I want to hear Gary talk more because he got the smoothest connection, man. He yeah, he the audio. Matter <laughs> of fact, I want to go over there and shoot a episode of Hustle and Flow, man. You remember when they was cutting up the milk cartons and putting them on the wall for the acoustics, man? It looked like huh. it looked like you got a better solution than they have, man. You probably could probably could record some tracks in there, man. Whoop yeah, that I could. Yeah, yeah, I can do full show. Yeah, man. You, you got the professional layout, no doubt. That's what I mean. But I, I don't go anywhere. The bed is actually over there. I just roll over. Oh my go right God. here. I just go over there. Yes, you don't want to go over there. It's just one room. Yeah, it's all in one room. One the bed room. is acoustically treated. <laughs> <It's ever so. laughs> so, so know? Gary is, is very popular on the show. I'm, I'm just looking at some of the comments. And, you know, we, we started that segment, what, what I miss. And I see somebody, well, what about Gary? Let, let's get Gary's input. So <laughs> he, he's getting a lot of comments. So, yeah, we, we got to make sure we, we, we keep this going. Gary, your, your uh, reputation is getting around. Well, that's what's up. And again, if you need masks, I am the plug for the masks. You know, I do have those. Reasonable All right. <laughs> all right. So let's shift gears a bit. I think we all need to focus on some workout tips and some nutrition because because it's easy to get off track. So before before we go to our expert, I need some workout and nutrition music from DJ Wody. Can DJ Wody hit us with some workout and nutrition music? Black family and family written. Uh, right. Black national anthem right there. Right. 
That's Beyonce song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he could keep it going and I could work the hand thing, okay? And the fitness expert. The fitness expert. I thought it was me. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, F. William, the, the other fitness yeah. expert. The other one. Right, uh, right. Because it's easy to talk about fitness if you're in shape, bro. But if you got 300 pounds of twisted steel, you you really got something to say. <laughs> I'm going to defer to Tony. All right, Tony. Oh, my anyway. gosh. Well, well, first of all, you know, um, I do work with, um, you know, finding solutions for hands and feet. I work for the National Cancer Institute. So um, I focus on uh, neuropathy and, um, you know, the energy coming from the ground all the way up and coming back down. That's how we, we, we work. That's how we are as humans. Um, we depend on gravity to keep us down. So sometimes, uh, uh, William, um, our, our gravity keeps us a little down more. But <laughs> but yeah. what I want to focus on, since you more. guys are doing a lot of teleworking and stuff like that, I don't want to focus on your hands because you can see my hands. So a lot of times we don't have a workout for the hands, right? So since I'm just seated, here's my five fingers on each hand. So what I want you to do is create claws right here. See this? A lot of times, this simple exercise, after doing a lot of this, you need to work your hands. A lot of people can't do this. What I do is I have a, a tool that measures in between this because sometimes my hands might look like this because this looks like arthritis. So as we age, one of the things we have to focus on is working your hands. So here, not only for teleworkers, but as for aging population, a lot of times, they may look like this. So I need to work my fingers. And here's the simple exercise. So you can do this every so often for teleworking or for your mother or your grandmother. See how they bend their fingers and see if it comes in there. The other concern I have is trigger finger. Don't know if you know about trigger finger. But yeah, that finger kind of gets stuck and locked in place and you can't, can't move it. So they have to cut in here to release that and then the finger pops up and you don't want to cut here. I don't even want a paper cut because this thing hurts. So think about cutting this to make this finger work again for trigger finger. So again, we want to focus on our hands. And one of the things I want to focus on in this here, this area here is called the carpal tunnel. So we don't want to get carpal tunnel syndrome. So I don't want to add that word in. So what I normally do with my hands is I take one finger at a time and I'll hold three fingers down and carefully by doing this right here, bringing the hand in, you're going to feel something pull all the way down here, which is good. So I can feel that. And then for 30 seconds, I go through each finger. Now, I don't know if any of you guys related to me because for some reason, my pinky finger on my left hand can't bend. <laughs> for some reason, I, this is the best I can do. But I know on this hand here, I can bend it. So I know that the tendons... In this hand, you'll see that when I do that, you see where it bends right here. So again, I'm looking at carpal tunnel syndrome because we, are, we, we my kids, I mean, there are years ago, my kids used to come with a busted, well, I did, bust up my elbow, bust everything up. Now kids, carpal tunnel, carpal tunnel syndrome. So here I go through each hand, going through this for about 30 seconds for each finger, focusing on here. Now, when I do this, watch. You'll see, I don't know if you can see, you see that moving right there? You can actually see it move. So I know that it's working around the elbow. Just by using one finger, you'll see how much the tension of each hand goes right here. So we know all this area here is also very important. So again, looking at carpal tunnel syndrome, as well as the function of your hands. Hands and feet, I believe are very important. So hopefully you can do that. Right there. You that, know, that's, I, good. That, that's good. That's that's good information. That's good information. Cause I, you know, I often work with my hands as I'm going in that chip bag and kind of doing <laughs> kind of the, the same. Oh my thing. gosh. So, so that definitely works the works I, the I, thing. I, 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 Ted, I was gonna say it was good information too, because you know, having to work your hands and having exercises. Um, I appreciate Tony sharing that. All this time I've been using olive oil 
And um, I don't use lotion because when you get over 50, you know, you change your standards. So you got to replenish and your skin got to be natural. So I use olive oil. Well, I'll I, I let, I, we'll use Tony's exercises. I think maybe. No, no, yeah, it's kind of oil. I, I, I don't like that ashy feeling, right? You don't want to ash your ashy hands, don't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, Good we, olive oil. Ashy hands. I wasn't really talking about lubricating my hands, though, but anyway. <laughs> Hey, okay. I hope you it. <laughs> All right. Olive oil, man. Just, you know. So the family, family, family show. Family show. Now, yeah. Now, yeah, olive oil is better for your skin. Thank you. Yes. So since we're talking about food, uh, um, maybe I'll slip into something simple here. And again, what we're looking at is, um, you know, during this time, um, we have to look at uh, some of the uh, nutrition. Um, I know for me, um, I I'm addicted to... And, and in fact, I have to stop. I'm addicted to flour, sugar, and salt. So these are the three things that we have to really get away from. If, if, if you're looking to eat healthier, and as, as I said, me, I'm, um, I'm in my 60s, and I have to try to keep going because I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to feel old and, and, and run down. So I have to make some cuts. And again, I have roti here because... That's my traditional thing from Trinidad. It's something that we eat. Um, but um, one of the, some of the questions people ask is, you know, what is a good source of protein? Now, for me, um, I mean, uh, I, I eat everything, so I can start with eggs. I mean, eggs are a high quality source of protein, and as I know, they're soft and easy to prepare. But if not, um, some of the other things are um, you can find it in uh, nuts. Now, the thing with nuts, um, you got to be careful because some people have allergies. So me, again, I'm not prescribing anything. This is, you know what you, you need. But nuts is another form of protein. And um, a lot of times as people age, you got to be careful because people might have a chewing problem. So you got to be careful with those things. So maybe, um, you know, nut butters, you know, are, are also good. You know, things such as protein as chicken and fish and meats are excellent source of protein. And if you're a vegan, you know, soy proteins are, are, are un unbelievable. Um, some people quickly is, uh, you know, what are good foods and what are bad foods? I just described to you, for me, my problem is uh, salt, sugar, and flour. So believe it or not, when I gave that up for six weeks, I actually lost 17 pounds without exercise. You know, without exercise, um, flour, sugar, and salt, you know, those, you know, those, those are, you got to stay away from there. But the good and the bad foods, it's, you know, we, we eat and we, we, we be married, but, you know, we, we should be realistic. And uh, the, the focus is eating in moderation, you know, just eat in moderation, you know, and um, you should get through that. And of course, fluids. Um, how many of you guys have water today? Anybody? Anybody drank? Let, let me see. What, what is that? That's a water container. Water bottle. That's Make a water a bottle. Water bottle. Yes. Put my water bottle next to his. Forty-four ounces. Forty-four ounces. You see that guy? He knows what he's doing. There you go. That's what you do. Forty-four ounces, and I'm sure that's what he drinks every day. He fills that, and you drink that. That's one of the best fluids that you can do, but also there are other fluids in which you can get things such as soups and, and different types of fruits like melons and, and grapes. So a lot of fruits and vegetables contain at least 90% of water. Now in the winter time, that's when you should hydrate more because we're inside, now we're getting out, but once we're inside for so many months, um, it actually, um, everything locked up does cause you causes dehydration so make sure that during the the seasonal times um there, you should be drinking more water during the winter time but anyway that's it for now hopefully you have some more questions for me later on and i just corroborate on tony one one second because uh i spent some time in the, uh I know you can't tell by looking at me, but on the personal training side, um, but you talked about flour um, as an alternative. I use almond flour and coconut flour. There we go. Both gluten free and they may provide you a bit of an alternative. I can also tell you that you're, you're absolutely correct. I stopped eating sugar and flour for 100 days and lost 55 pounds. 
Hmm. Uh, of course, yeah. I found 25 of them and I know exactly <laughs> where we're reunited again, but but it does work if you can sustain it. It does work. Yeah, but the main thing, too, is your mental health. A lot okay. of times when you cut these things, these things add stress, you know, the, the, the salts, you know, if you have high blood pressure, it takes it up. And sometimes those things are hidden. So if you can cut some of those things and add the substitutes, you'll notice also in high pressure, the way how you sleep, all these things come together and they do add up for a better quality of life. And that's what we try to sustain. All right, Tony, I got a question from the people. Again, don't judge me. This is from the people. What about lemon pepper wings and french fries? You, that wasn't <laughs> mentioned as part of the diet. <laughs> oh, man. You know, out there in the world, um, there's a guy I, I train and I, I call him my wingman. And, and we, right after we worked out, we used to go for wings. We don't do that anymore. Um, no, the answer is no. The answer is no. <laughs> no. Okay, again, okay. I'm just trying to get the questions out here, you know. I'm sorry. But, but right. it tastes good. Now, moderation. I mean, okay. as I said, I, I, I love the foods. You know, go ahead and live, but know that... You can moderate those things and monitor when you eat it during the week. So you can't have everything all every day, you know, keeping it high because then um, you're going to hit a low somewhere. And I hope it doesn't, you don't end up somewhere where that, you know, you don't want to be. Yep. Okay. Well, certainly thank you to Tony Bryan for those tips. And we got a lot of good takeaways. How can people get a hold of you if they want? additional fitness and nutrition tips um they could come to uh of course my facebook page um tony Bryan. you'll see me um i have some uh, workouts there uh lab fitness um llc uh i'm here in the uh um in the maryland area um focusing on you know programs in our communities and especially in prince george's county i do a lot of classes a lot of zumba classes and um just, just keep in tune with what we're doing right here and tune in and get some more answers right here. All right. Thank you, Tony Bryan, for sharing those tips and letting us know that these wings aren't on the menu. It's, it's disappointing, but all right. we all needed to hear it, right? Yeah, you got to hear it. <laughs> all right. Okay. So we, we're going to transition a little bit and get into the, the seriously silly aspects of this whole pandemic I, I i got i have enough for two episodes but we will we'll limit it seriously silly do we dj wody do we have any seriously silly music how are you doing it's friday yeah I don't know how silly that is, but it's pretty hot. It's always a hot track. Yeah. Do your hand exercises. So, all right. So, Ted, you going to say something? Man, you know, just, you know, what's really bothering me is just the lack of, uh, of sports on television then right you know you just can't you know it's just it's no football it's no basketball it's no baseball it's not a you know it's not much sports going on so you know I had posted something the other day on Facebook I was over at my mom's house the other day and I was watching the 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 the, the Perina Beverly Hills dog show you know and they're out there walking all these little dogs around I seen somebody you know kissing the dog all in the mouth and it was just you know I, for me I'm just like you know it's got to be bad if I'm sitting here watching the the Purina dog show but the one thing that was good as I was looking at TMZ today and there's a gentleman on there uh they were talking about this guy named Dana Dana White and this guy has I guess somehow uh uh I guess reserved a whole island Oh, and he's going to have you he's going to have ufc fighting there and so he's going to be bringing people from like all over the world they said they're going to be you know they're going to they're not going to have any fans there but they're going to be you know t you know they're going to do these you know the tests of everybody in there that's going to be that's going to be a part of this all the i guess the fighters and then uh 
actually the people that are, um, you know, the judges and referees or what have you, and they're going to be over there fighting. He said it's starting on, I think, the 18th of this month. There's going to be fights every week. Wow. On this island, money, right? Man. So, so they're, they're gonna they're gonna test them like COVID test them. I guess make sure they're good. That's mm. right. And wow. they're gonna fight every week on this island. Now, you know, I don't know. I mean, well, I don't know what happens. I mean, do they get tossed off the island if they lose? No, they, they got that show know. already. It's called Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's late. So, yeah. So I think that's gonna be pretty. That's been pretty cool. Hey, I, I, I agree, Ted. Um, I watch everything on ESPN, man. I watched the American Cornhole Championship last week. I watched the Axe Throwing Championship. And I memorized the 2018 college football playoffs. <laughs> like, I know all the like, like, I could go run the offense. With just give me 10 guys. I could run all the offense for both teams. Because, like, they have it on, like, every night. Yeah. And uh, I'm just committed to ESPN, so I just watch anyway. And, um, yeah, I, I got them plays memorized, man. Hey, man. man uh, I, I watched the, ESPN, I watched the ESPN NBA Finals like I've never seen it before the other day. <laughs> 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 I was like, wait a minute, who's going to win? That was great. <laughs> well, it's funny, you can watch them now like Marvel uh, movies, you know, look for things you didn't see before. Oh, you know? Catch Easter eggs in the basketball game. You know? Yeah. Now ESPN has a whole bunch of other channels that um I started looking at one with uh, cherry pit spitting. There's one I can't ever seen that one. No. Where, you know, so my kids and I go in the backyard to see if we can qualify for that. You know, how far you can spit a cherry seed or whatever it's called. You know, um, there's what a lot, you lot of entertaining. Huh? <laughs> like how, so how do you get into that? Like how do right. you how do you find that you have a talent for cherry pit spinning? You know, it's 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 in the mouth, it's lungs. I'm sure uh, my friend uh, Mr. Samuel there can just just expand and just throw 300 feet. Three hundred. Uh, you, you, you can. You, what you ever try? I'm gonna try it. Or when we when we when this is all over and we go back to church, I'm gonna yeah. try it. I'm gonna <laughs> sit. I'm gonna sit in the um, in the deacon back. section and see if I can hit the pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try and, and, and all good in all fairness, you know, and if it works out, we might actually have a cherry pit spitting team sponsored by the church. Because you know the church will sponsor you. Yeah. If you got a chance to win, the church will sponsor you. So I'm I'm gonna try it when we go back to church. That sounds good. Yeah, man. So so, so Bill, what you think is gonna be like once they open churches back up, man? I mean, shoot, that oh, service once, that once first they open, that, I thought they were still open. <laughs> look, look, that, look, that, look. Look, that, that first service is going to be about eight hours long. <laughs> not, not only is that first, hey, look, that first collection is going to be eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> we got some money to collect, bro. <laughs> hey, we got some money to collect, man. It's going to be like one song, one offering, one song, one offering, one, song, <laughs> one offering, pastor's message and an offering, visitors stand up and greet and an offering, and one more song and an offering, and then we're going to go home. We, oh, we got we to catch up, man. We got to catch up. Oh, I yeah. know. Crazy. Yeah. Well, hopefully, can. Gary. Gary, do you, do you, hopefully you can get to church, man. Do you you get out to go to church at all? Oh no, I help the churches uh, build the digital signal so I can watch it at home. Yeah. I'm the tech guy. I just go out once when nobody's there and help build their infrastructure so they can stream it. Then I can watch it at home. So, so wait, hold on. Oh, hey, hey, hang on, hang on. So you help the church build their streaming system so you can stay home and watch it. Yeah, and anybody else who's interested, you know, you. Older well, ladies it, it and works. men who it can't works. go and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, a lot of you know he provides the service where people uh, that do areas they can't get to church. So this is the man to come to. Yeah, exactly. and build it. And then I, that just works for me, where I don't have to physically go and the traffic and the crowd and stuff. That works. Yeah. Hey, it's like you can watch what you create. I'm sorry, yeah. Bill. What were you saying? The thing about going to church online is when you come in late, you don't have to sit in the front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You can be late and nobody knows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, the the other the other thing, Bill, is you don't have to say anything to your neighbor either, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're right. You look to your neighbor to the left, your neighbor to the right. Can you high five six people up in here? Like you don't have to do any of that when you're, you're right. at home. So you're that's right. a good thing about that. Yeah. yeah. That's gonna. But I will say. But I will say. But I will say one. 
But I will say one thing about being at home, though. It's like it's almost like you and the pastor one on one. Like you know he's talking to you because there's nobody else in there but you and the pastor he's just looking at the screen. You can't look around. And, no, I'm talking to you. This That's is for true. you. That's true. That is great. So here's something that's seriously silly. You know, everybody's now on Zoom, right? Everybody's doing these virtual meetings. They've had to change Zoom security because people are now breaking into Zoom meetings. Like, like who breaks into a Zoom meeting? Like, like can you imagine you, you're, on the, you're on the Zoom meeting with your family and all of a sudden it's like, what? Well, I didn't know we had a white cousin. There's, a, there's a, somebody that's square that I don't recognize. Hey, we, we do virtual comedy, man, and, and Zoom, and they said for your protection, you got to use a password, but I'm not using the password because I need as many people in that room as I could get, man. So my hackers are welcome. As long as they laugh at the jokes and they're not disrespectful. That's all right. Hey, we may have somebody trying to hack up in here. It's like we, we got an extra square. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so you just about, go ahead, Ted. So, what about all this stuff around the around the st the stimulus money? Like everybody is 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 positioning for this this stimulus money. Like they're gonna be giving like, all this money. Like you know what you know what's the deal with that? I mean, you know, I guess you no know, people now are like you know filing for taxes that they haven't done in the past ten years. You know, yeah. in order to be able to get the stimulus money. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I know they've got like what financial restrictions about how much you make and all of that. My wife walking in in her pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> I got her walking out. Sorry about that. <laughs> I just want to properly credit her on screen. Right, <laughs> and, I, and I'm sure she appreciates that too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but now I mean, they've, they've got limits on who they're giving the checks to, and I, I'll take a check. I mean, if you, you're giving free money out, hey, send it my way. Right. You know, it's, it's, you know those, those stories play out in the news so well, man. And, you know, being in business, you, you look at stuff a little closer sometimes than other folks. And I, I just don't see it materializing the way they suggest it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the, for the $1,200 checks, I believe there is a, a, a population that that's going to really benefit. Yeah. Uh, I'm not waiting on a $1,200 check. I'm not going to get a $1,200 check. I don't know a lot of people who are going to get a $1,200 check. But, but even the payment protection loan and all that SBA financing, they put so many encumbrances on that stuff so often uh, that it just, it, it just, they make it really, really difficult. And I mean, you know, mortgage relief in New Jersey, the mortgage relief is, okay, so three months forbearance, you don't have to pay your mortgage. But on the fourth month, you owe four months. Yeah. <laughs> and they so, call that relief and they said well if you can't pay off four months at once then you can apply for some other assistance well if you're not working or you're not collecting money or you're not generating revenue what other assistance you're going to qualify for so people are really really going to have a hard time man and um it's it's really difficult all the way around man i mean if you look at your circles you can see how you're dealing with it but then if you look at folks who are not even particularly in your immediate circle and you can understand how far reaching this thing could be, you know, like comedians, I, I never paid attention, you know, um, transitioning as an entrepreneur doing business and, and then trying to fulfill my advocation to relieve stress and do comedy and produce shows. I come in contact with a lot of comedians and a lot who are either full-time comedians or striving to get to the point where they can live off of telling jokes on a regular basis. And I have to tell you, man, it's a sad situation when all your revenue is derived off of your performance mm -hmm. and you yeah. can't perform. Yeah. yeah. Right? Think about some of these people, you can call it the gig economy, if you will, but some of these people who are not living off of W-2 paychecks, but mm -hmm. might be making $5,000 a week. Mm -hmm. and all yeah. of a sudden it just goes to zero yeah. yeah you know and and you know they know how to hustle uh but unless you doing pop-up shows in the grocery store and you know because that's where all the people are you got to go where the people are man. So, in fact i'm doing a show saturday in aisle nine <laughs> and, um, aside from that 
it's really, really difficult. People are really having a hard time, man. And it's going to be like that for a little while. I'm, yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I think Bill at the grocery, I think the hazmat guy was talking about earlier, he'll be there. So <laughs> just be on the lookout. But I think one, one of the lessons that's come out of this is I think we need to think about diversification. Yeah. And that's that, Bill, I mean, you and I, we, we, we've worked together. Mm -hmm. you, we've done book signings and you've got clothing lines and you've got all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. DJ Wody, you DJ, you do. So Ted, I mean, you understand diversification. I think that's, that's going to be one of the biggest takeaways from this whole thing. I, I actually think, I actually hope that you're going to see a rise or a spike in entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. you know, um, hopefully people will, will pay more attention to like, okay, so, they said I can't get paid, so there's just nothing for me. And maybe think about how they create or generate their own. You know, I always tell my daughter, um, be a be a produce produce content. Yeah, yeah. You know, whether it's digital, whether it's physical, produce content, and you have some opportunity that just it, it's not a guarantee. It just may set you up just a tad bit better, so you have a few more options. And I think I think people are going to figure that out. I think yeah, they're gonna be more, more that. Absolutely. Well, I Absolutely. Think, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go in to start me a sanitizer company and toilet paper company. Mm -hmm. yeah. There you yeah. go. I mean, because I, I think that once that stuff gets back on the shelf, I mean, it's always gonna be those are always gonna be hot items. Right? Yeah. I don't think that they you know these are things that a couple months ago we just kind of grabbed and didn't think much of it. Now. Man, you can't find that stuff in any stores. And when it comes in there, it doesn't yeah. stay in there anytime. Yeah, and uh, for me, um, what's, what's interesting about what I do um, in regards to wellness, um, I actually started breathing classes, breathing classes um, to release stress. Hmm. So I started, um, you know, focusing on stepping away. How do you disconnect yourself or detach yourself from your work after this? This place that we have here for one minute and focus on your breath so we first I teach people how to breathe hmm. and um, I have been doing at least three or four classes especially for um, you know people that are uh, right now um, this week going into either the fourth or the fifth week or, or maybe the sixth week for some people um, they're very stressed um, and, and the levels are going up depression stress these are things that are uh, increasing so someone like myself, I go on Zoom and um, I teach uh, breathing classes. Hey, Tony, that's a valid point. And, you know, just to assist with marketing, uh, they got a movie out that will compliment your service called Waiting at Chat. <laughs> <laughs> find a way to incorporate that in your business, man. You know, I don't know. You want it already. You want it already. So, 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 so. Another other areas that, don't, that aren't going down, you know, my family's eaten more food in the last four weeks than anybody. So the food business or food industry, that's a natural hustle. And one other is alcohol. I mean, the liquor stores are essential. I mean, you have yeah. to be essential you don't stay home and kill your family. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, he, you know, here's something to think about, though. We got, you know, Easter coming up this weekend. And so yeah. what is it going to be like? It's going to be like curbside pickup for Easter dinner. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, that's going to be something there. Food will be consumed. Oh, yeah. And I have to tell you, that's another byproduct that we didn't expect. Yeah. Uh, sheltering in place in my house is three adults eating three meals a day at least. Mm -hmm. And we're not worried about the toilet paper. Certainly the grocery bill has probably tripled. But I'm like, who's going to wash all these dishes? <laughs> You know, I mean, it's a problem because think about it. You usually, when you're on your way, you, you grab something or you miss a meal, but three meals a day for three people, man, it's dishes on fleek. Yeah, man, I'm telling yeah, you. And I know recycling has gone up in my house. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to go to paper plates yeah. and cups. And, and as a matter of fact, I want to throw all the pots and pans away. Like all you really need is an air fryer and a crock pot. Right, right. Fewer <laughs> things to watch, man. And if you've never seen anybody scramble eggs in a crock pot, I'm going live on Facebook tomorrow at 9 30. 
we, we definitely we got to check that out. No doubt. Because we, we're coming down the home stretch here of the 30 minute hour live on lockdown. And I want to talk about what's trending, right? Because because the people, they're sitting at home, they're, they're looking at Netflix, they're looking at these other Hulu, these other shows. So let's talk about, fellas, what are you watching? What's trending? Ozark. Anybody seen Ozark? No. Yeah, not yet. I, I'm, it's on my list. Everybody's talking about it. Ozark is off the chain. I watched the first two seasons before uh, this last month. The third season is really off the chain. So uh, if you hadn't watched it, I, I recommend Ozark. Ozark? Okay. Ozark. Ozark season three. Season three. But you got to watch one and two first, though, so you understand it. So. Okay. I got you. Hey, I, I watched a, a four-season, a total of 16 episodes, Hip Hop Evolution. Okay. Mm, it was dynamite, man. And, you know, I've always been a fan of hip hop, but it chronicled not only just the beginning and the New York story, but hip hop from different regions, you know, how they built their scene in New Orleans and in Miami and in the Bay Area and in Atlanta and in Detroit. And then they talked about how hip hop has kind of gone through the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s. And currently it was really, really a great documentary, man. Really? Mm. Okay. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, you gotta have some time, though, because the thing about Netflix is, you know, this whole binge thing is, it's you know, once you press play, they got you, right? Because at the end of the episode, you're trying to think about what you're gonna do, and it's like next episode at four, three. I'm like, oh god, I can't get out. So <laughs> it's really intentional, man. And before you know it, you'd be sitting on the couch three hours. Yeah. So the. Uh... Aaron Hernandez, I was watching this Aaron Hernandez yeah. special on Netflix. And that, they got me with that. I'm thinking it's just going to be the one show. And then it's like, stay tuned for the next one. Yep. I'm like, I just can't leave. Yeah. I have to see what's going to happen next. I don't know how they came up. Who, who came up with that with that concept to uh, automatically roll you into the next episode? Like within. Oh, man. Yep. Yo, they, they hit that one. Oh, mm -hmm. man. Well, I'm telling you, the only thing, the thing that I'm watching is CNN, because mm -hmm. that right there is interesting enough to sit and watch whenever the president and everybody comes up to, to give inconsistent information daily. Yeah. And then, and then the one lady that always has a scarf on every day. Like, I don't know what's what going with the lady with the scarf. Yeah. But hey, I, I, I used to watch it for comedy, right? Because I thought it was funny, the president. But I can't watch it no more, man. Yeah. Oh man, I just can't. I'll get the clips from the news. I watch a lot of MSNBC, and everybody's going to talk about what he said anyway. So right. I'm not watching anymore. Well, for me, yeah. guys, um, I've fallen for this guy, Baby Yoda. Buddy, Baby Yoda. Yeah, I haven't Pandora. seen Mandalorian yet either. Jesus, all over the place. So with Disney, um, Mandalorian, the, the, that's that's me. I, I'm a Star Wars fanatic. So, you know, I'm hooked in the first season, looking forward to the second. So, um, yeah, I binge watch every every one of those. Tony, that's that's on Disney Plus. Yes. You got that big money. That's another twelve dollars. With my <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, oh, brother. Brothers, brothers doing big things. Hey, that that nutrition that, that pays, man. It's paying <laughs> off. All right, Gary, what's trending? For me, the only thing I'm watching is 90 Day Fiance. That's on Hulu. <laughs> I know it's weird, but same thing. I, I watched one episode. It was weird enough. You see in the international couples, whatever, try to work it out. And I just had to binge watch the whole season. Now I'm on. <laughs> and that's the only thing I look at is 90 Day Fiance. I got, it's a good show. I just got to admit, it's a good show. 90 Day Fiance. Yep, you have 90 days to marry two couples from somewhere around the world. So you got a Florida Trump Washington. lady who flew to Nigeria trying to find love and just takes you on all kind of crazy adventures. So I recommend that. You know, you know, it's all kind of like reality type shows out there. I saw a show last week where they had, uh, they brought a man and a woman together. They put them out in the wilderness someplace naked and didn't give them, they gave them like a knife and maybe a stick, like whatever they wanted, like one item. And they had to just basically go through the wild, you know, keep warm, cook their food. I mean, kill their food. I mean, I thought that was the craziest 
thing. I mean, they're out there barefoot, like no shoes. I'm like, and I'm sitting there, you know, they got tigers and stuff. Like I'm looking at this stuff. I'm like, who would actually want to do that? Even with clothes on versus being out there naked, you know? So, you know, it's just, uh, it's just some interesting stuff on television that you probably never normally watch. They were when you sit home on quarantine. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, just, just a lot of a lot of different options to choose from. Hopefully, uh, we we gave some people some good tips uh, while they're locked down. So some things they could be they could be checking out. So as, we, as we're coming down the home stretch, F. William Samuel, tell the good people how they can get a, get in contact with you, what projects you got coming up next. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, you can catch me on Facebook, F. William Samuel Comedy. That's my page. Please like my page, but also on Instagram at F. William Samuel Comedy. Uh, before this virus, we were doing uh, one show a month, the first Thursday of each month called Chocolate Thursdays. We are now virtually online every Thursday, Chocolate Thursdays at 4 p.m. You know, we try to take, you know, it's too much traffic, six, seven, eight, nine o'clock, man. People got too much going on. So we like the after school portion of the entertainment you know we want to catch you right after you finish that new math and you need a break yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh that's chocolate thursdays f william samuel comedy and um that's that's good and, and uh, you know the thing the, the other thing that we didn't talk about this is the essential workers versus the non-essential workers mm. and while um there are a lot of technically non-essential workers out of work there's still a good labor force you can depend on that are out there working every day to crackheads brother you need them too because where else can you get your car wash for 75 cents <laughs> right i got my car wash for 75 cents did you do use real soap too i mean like he had a bar, a bar of iris spring real soap real soap man you real can't soap. beat that for 75 cents so there, there are benefits all the way around to this thing, man. You just got to look for, as I say, the Corona silver linings. You got to look for the silver linings because there's some positive byproducts of all of this stuff, man. Yeah, see, I, I never thought of that. Like, my, my glass is half full. I'm always looking for the positive, but I did not consider that. Yeah, man. So, 75 cents, man. <laughs> 75 cents. <laughs> Hey, All right. Real quick, I wanna I wanna thank you, Twigs, for bringing this panel together too, man. It was real good to hang out with you guys. Um, and, and Ted, I don't know if you remember, man. We I think we first met about twelve years ago in Orlando. We went on a business recruiting trip. He he probably don't remember. We was in the limousine together. You remember uh, when Orlando Economic Development was trying to recruit businesses to Orlando? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, that yeah. About two thousand eight. 2007 2008 yeah. they took us down there for the florida classic right what was it Bethune yeah. and, FAMU? Yeah. and they wanted to show us the town and show us all the uh industries and what was going on or whatever man so that that's when we first met i couldn't yeah, remember that. man i do remember I that did, look, did, did, look, did, look did, did you ever get any business out of that no we actually set up an <laughs> office in in uh, orlando and had a bunch of meetings you know and but didn't get any business yeah, well, yeah, right. I remember that, man. That's cool. Yep, the small world. So, DJ Woody, how can people get in contact with you to have them have you DJ their next virtual event? Uh, yeah, I'll be on Instagram on Monday nights from 8 to 10 at Woody Rock on IG W O D I E R O C K every Monday night from 8 to 10. We call it Martini Mondays without the martinis. Hey, right. hey, well, hey, hey, well, hey, Woody, what does the numbers look like? I know last week, I think you said you had about 30, 30 people. I mean, what does it look like this week? Well, you know, I think I did be messing with me because it, it really should be a K after that 30, but it just be like right. 30, 32. You know, the yeah. K falls off, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, somewhere around there. They want, okay. you, they want you to subscribe to premium and then they give you the K. That's, what it is. <laughs> That's how it works. They're leaving the K off. All right, Garrett. Gary, I know you're the you're the marketing genius. How can people get a hold of you to? Um, you can go to wisesnake.live. Uh, that's my page. It's mostly gaming stuff because again, I create a lot of content. So um, if you want to see games being played, but it's it's more about the games, the marketing strategy. So obviously, I drive a lot of traffic to people watching me play games, but I use that marketing strategy for regular businesses like a coffee shop who need traffic on Instagram or wherever. 
YouTube mainly. So you can go to ysnake.live. You can see a portfolio of work there if you want to, but that's where I am. Or that's where you, that's where to find me to see where I am at the moment. So it's going to be, YouTube, it's going to be Instagram or YouTube live. One of them. Cause, cause we, cause, cause we know where you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be, at, you're going to be at home. Yeah, you'll see the same setup background, except for the screen will have some video. We're going to be shooting Hustle and Flow part two. <laughs> it's getting hard out here. All right. <laughs> All right. So, and you know where you can find Ted Fells and I, right? On the 30 Minute Hour podcast. You know, we, we do our thing on Mondays. Now we're doing them Facebook Live and we get it recorded to your favorite podcasting app. So check us out on Mondays at seven o'clock on the 30 minute hour. We do it live from Facebook. Uh, every Wednesday, we're doing the 30 minute hour live. Don't forget to visit the 30 minute hour.net. You can see these episodes and our uh, original episodes where we're interviewing a guest. Well, that is our time for this week. Tune in next Wednesday, six o'clock on the 30 Minute Hour Facebook page. Until next time, have a great one. Peace.